Mark Rudd, station manager. I started work at Fiddler's Ferry on the 23rd of October 2000. The first impression of Fiddler's um, is, first of all, is the actual size. You know, it's a vast, vast site, huge, uh, huge power station. Um, but the immediate impression was the people, the warmth, the hospitality, you know, and the friendliness of the people. That was a, the real thing what struck me about Fiddler's when I started here, it was the people. You know, it's a huge site, it's a, but it's the, the people which made this site. Um, and I say, it really is a family. Uh, and that overwhelming feeling of being part of a family, being made feel welcome from day one. The station was built here because of the location in terms of cooling water, but also to burn the coal of the Lancash coal field. So uh, as a CGB moved from the smaller stations to the big 2000 megawatt stations, this station was built to burn the coal of the Lancash coal field, as uh, the position is within you know, several pits, which have now long gone, but Sutton Manor, uh, Crompton Colliery, Bold, um, so in terms of location, cooling water, access to uh, um, the local coal field, that was one of the main reasons it was built in this area. The station was still using British coal into the 2000s, um, but in the 90s we started exploring uh, foreign coals, Russian, South African, Colombian, Venezuelan, American, Australian. So, um, you name it, we've probably had a go at burning to the Fiddler's Ferry. Um, and they brought challenges, different challenges, as they were different characteristics and the, the, the natural um, f you know, feed based diet of the Lancashire coal field. Um, but as every challenge um, which Fiddler's was presented with, the guys met it and was very successful at blending and burning different coals from around the world. Well, over the years, the environmental challenges, you know, out. Um, increase shall we say and the station you know, engineered a lot of these out in terms of NOx reduction, particulates reduction, um, you know the huge investment which SSE made of 160 million in the FGD plant, fluid gas desulfurization plant and again um, every challenge was met head on by, by the guys on the site and successfully managed. In the 90s there would have been over a thousand people on, on site. The, the latter end were down to around 500 people worked on site um, on an average um, but during outage periods when there was a shutdown, big major maintenance activities, you know anything from a thousand to 1500 people come, come through site in a 12 week period. <laughs> something going on at Fiddler's Ferry. That was the, uh, that's what made Fiddler's Ferry special. It was the people, it was the camaraderie, it was the, the crack if you want, you know. So, a lot of jobs at Fiddler's Ferry, um, dirty, hot, difficult, but the, uh, the people and the camaraderie and, shall we say, the characters on site, you know. You always knew he was coming into 
something different every day, whether that be engineering technically wise or operational wise a challenge. But you always knew, you know, you'd uh, be doing that work with a smile on your face because of the people who worked here. It was the, uh, you know, shall we say, the fiddlers very well. It was uh, get stuck in, you know, but have a laugh while you was doing it and enjoy doing it. During high winds in January 1984, it was B2 cooling tower that collapsed. It was subsequently rebuilt, I think around the cost of about uh, two million pounds um, from um, local contracting organisations. But yeah, B2 cooling tower um, collapsed and it was uh, went down in Fiddler's Ferry history that day uh, for the guys who were on site long before my time. But again, it's uh, it's logged uh, on one of the probably the most eventful days at Fiddler's Ferry history. Fiddler's Ferry played a huge part in the, the local community, raising tens and hundreds of thousands of pounds for local charities um, and one of the the main events was an annual golf day which uh, Brian Cadham one of our shift charging engineers at the time set up a, a golf day in 2001 and it became an annual event um, raising tens of thousands of pounds every year uh, for three local hospices and over the years um, the golf day alone raised near half a million pounds for local charities and there's over the years in terms of impact and support in the local community local football teams playing on here local churches graveyards um, refurbishing and um, NSPCC um, have been supported and again it just shows in terms of you know the people at Fiddler's Ferry, that warmth and that compassion and wanting to play a part in the local community. Well, Fiddler's Ferry was part of the Black Start system, so it could start from a, shall we say, a car battery, which started an engine, which in turn started a gas turbine, which in turn fed the station. So yeah, it, it's true, it could be started from a car battery. Coal-fired power station, they have a smell about it, there's a noise to it, there's a buzz to it. Uh, and when you go to, um, other types of power station, they don't have that same feel, noise, smell about it. Uh, and now uh, when you come back to site and it is quiet, you know, it, it, it is quite eerie. There's an educational resource centre uh, here where local schools came through. Um, we, we ran days where, you know, employees could bring the kids in or over summer, local people could bring the kids in. Again, a huge impact uh, in the surrounding area and you know schools coming in learning about power generation um, yeah, I've, I've had a, a real impact on the local community. A few of the station managers come from CGB apprentices you know and that was a, again a great thing about not only Fiddler's Ferry but the power industry you could come in as an apprentice and you know if you had the attitude the desire the commitment you could work your way up through the ranks so yeah quite common that you know and people who started at 16 as apprentices go on to very senior positions within the, the company and organisation. Working on other power stations up and down the country in, in other in, um, industries because they have a huge, you know, huge amount of skills, knowledge and experience which they can take with them and, and, and use elsewhere. Well the mix of electricity on the national grid now is nuclear, gas, renewables, wind, solar, hydro stations, there's still a little bit of coal uh, generated um, during periods of uh, high demand um, but there's only now two coal stations operating in England, Drax and Ratcliffe Power Station. Because of the, because of the carbon, carbon tax, so shall we say the more polluting fossil fuel um, power stations, gas, coal are taxed the carbon, you know, the carbon they produce, so you know it's more expensive to produce electricity via coal. The site's being SSE are selling the site, so um, it will be down to the new owners to determine what you know the, the town, the program for demolition, redevelopment. Um, what SSC is uh, is looking to sell the site and as uh, the nation, as the world strives to move to net zero. You know, the move away from coal was uh, 
was needed. As sad as it is for for us um, who are involved and who've got calling so in our veins, it, you know, you've got to accept that uh, we need to move on.